Hi, this is Andre, and thanks for checking out Synthicipy. Synthicipy, a scientifically integrating the wisdoms of history, based on fact and truth, into our present culture. So let's take a look today at chapter 27, the upside down bell curve. Let's start with the regular bell curve. The regular bell curve refers to a normal distribution of values across a range. Let's look at the distribution of human height. Uh, looking at the blue line, the average human height right there is about uh, 66 inches, which is what? That's uh, 5 feet 6 inches. And from there, there's a range of the number taller and shorter than the average moving down and away from the average in both directions, making the shape of a bell. That's why it's called the bell curve. Note the red curve is a perfect bell, and that bell curve is the normal distribution, the statistically normal distribution makes the perfect bell. So we can see that the actual distribution of human height is pretty close to the normal bell curve. With that in mind, let's look at the distribution of political views in the U.S. from the perspective of left and right, as presented in surveys conducted by the Pew Research Center. Particularly, let's look at the bell curves from 1994 to 2017 regarding the medians of Democratic and Republican views in the USA. Uh, and this is presented in the, in the article titled, Political Polarization, 1994-2017. If we look at the results of their survey here in 1994, we can see the bell curve. Consistently liberal on this end, consistently conservative on that end, we see the overlap and a bell curve. Looking at 1999, again, we have significant Democratic and Republican overlap. Overall, it looks like a bell. We get to 2004. Again, we see the Democratic and Republican overlap. Still looks like a bell. Then we get to 2011. We start to see a little bit of separation. So we can ask, are Democrats and Republicans starting to separate? Or is this still a bell? We can answer that question when we look at 2014. We can see that Democrats and Republicans are separating in their left versus right political views. We can start to see the dip in the middle. By the time we get to 2017, we can see that Democrats and Republicans have significantly separated. There are now two peaks. And we see that the medians are significantly separated. So let's continue to look at another graph. For information in this area. Here are the results of political position surveys, again conducted by Pew Research over the past 25 years. And uh, this survey and the, and the details are included for reference at the bottom of this web page. In this graph, we can see the percentage partisan gap in po political views increase over the past 25 years. On average, there is now in the area of a 36 percentage point difference between Democrats and Republicans in their political views. Note the gap starts to widen between 1999 and 2004 by two percentage points, which is the time, the year 2000 if you recall, that Kurt Anderson 
claimed as the first unequivocal year of Fantasyland. And the gap increases sharply after that. By 2011, we can see a 26% difference. And by 2017, we're looking at a 36% difference. We can see polarization taking place. Let's look in more detail to the left and right ideological curves over the last 25 years. Uh, this information here is uh, from a different article, uh, again from the Pew Research Center, titled Political Polarization in the American Public, 2014. Uh, what these graphs show are the extent to which members of both parties have become more ideologically consistent and as a result further apart from one another, i.e. polarized. Uh, again, we can see here in 1994, Pretty much regular bell curve, 2004, regular bell curve. Again, here in 2014, we start to see the split. Uh, note that the median re re Republican here is more conservative than nearly 94% of Democrats. And over here, the median Democrat is more liberal than 92% of the Republicans. And this is particularly the case among individuals that are politically engaged. If we take a look here, among the engaged, back in 1994, we can see pretty much a bell curve. In 2004, among the politically engaged, we're starting to see a separation. Recall back what the general population that was not in 2004 split. By 2014, we can start to see a significant split between the Democrat and Republican medians. Among Americans who kept up with politics and government and who regularly voted, fully 99% of Republicans were more conservative than the median Democrat, while 98% of Democrats were more liberal than the median Republican. So here we can see the start of significant polarization. Another Pew survey was done in 2017. Here's a graph of the politically engaged. Uh, here we can see the upside down bell curve becomes rather prominent among the politically engaged. So let's add this graph to the others and look at the progression of the politically engaged over the past 25 years. Note in 1994, as we said, there is no split in the curve between the left and the right. In 2004, we can see the split starting among the politically engaged by 2014, we can see an increase in polarization as the upside down bell curve shows itself. And by 2017, the upside down bell curve becomes prominent. This shows us the polarization of the left and the right and the upside down bell curve now present in the USA. If the bell curve is considered normal, why do we as a society among the politically active have an upside down bell curve? Is that abnormal? Why are we so polarized? The answer lies in the human brain and neurological evolution. It's in our genes. It's been in our genes for a very long time. Cognitive bias probably developing over the course of late mammalian evolution and present in Australopithecus to confirmation bias in Homo habilis to the tribe and argumentative theory where truth doesn't matter, winning the argument and gaining power does in Homo erectus. All the while 
generating the tribal ethos resulting in the warrior ethos that led Homo sapiens out of Africa 70,000 years ago to dominate the world. Our genetically evolved and present cognitive, confirmation, tribal, and argumentative biases shape our polarized perceptions of the world around us. And our warrior ethos finds others of similar mind to battle the opposing party. Do we have to be this polarized? Can individual human consciousness be aware of this predisposition and keep it in check? Putting value in moderation, reason, and truth. Can your neural reality be neural rather than unreal? Ben Franklin addressed that question after the Constitutional Convention. He said, we've given you a republic. Can you keep it? Perhaps if we depolarize, get back to the normal bell curve, become more neural, and become more centrist as a nation, the answer will be yes.